All right, so let's get started. Uh, you can see my scene here. Um, I have a few things set up in the objects panel. I have my back rim light, front fill light, and HDRI, uh, and it, my camera. Um, we're not in the camera right now, so you can kind of see it pointing at the location where our avatar will be. Uh, and then over here on the right, uh, you can see uh, my eyes, skin, teeth, tongue, and hair uh, materials. So we'll use those as we create uh, the avatar. Um, should be fun. Let's, let's dive in. Uh, so first of all, we're going to need a sphere. So let's create it. I'll left click on this option here and just release on the sphere object. Uh, so uh, let's let's get in there on the sphere. Now a sphere on itself probably isn't going to look the way we want it to look. Um, so I like to do a few, few things when I create a sphere. I like to switch it to a hexahedron just because it has uh, better quads. You can kind of see how those look uh, when I turn them on. It has that kind of a more balanced look so you don't get pinching at the poles um, let's switch that to quick shading so I don't see the lights so much. Um, all right, so that looks good. Um, 16 segments is more than enough. Um, let's make it editable. Um, and we're going to change the, the shape of this head a bit. We're going to make it a little bit more stylized of a head. Um, and that's a little bit too deep. So we want it to be about there. And we can change the shape of this later with with some light sculpting, which I'll show you. Um, so there we have a pretty simple head shape. Uh, maybe we can squish it just a little bit. Um, let's see how that turns out. Uh, next we want to do is our ears. So I like to create ears using um, a cylinder object. So let's create that. Um, first of all, uh, I like to rotate it. So hit the R key. Then holding shift, I click this red line here, and it snaps to the five degree marks. Um, and then I drag it out, rough position, where I want it. Now you can make the ears look however you want, but we want to position the ears uh, roughly the same area where they're going to be on the character. Now we don't want to actually have to create two ears. We want to use a symmetry object. So let's go up here and create a symmetry object and drag the cylinder into it. And you'll notice that it creates the ear on the other side too. That looks pretty cool, right? So now if we wanted to rotate the ear back and make it look more like an ear would on a person, you'll notice that it's tilted back there on the other side too. So then if you wanted to change where this ear is, all you have to do is edit the one ear and it changes position for the other one. So this ear, while it might be good on its own, um, there's a few things that's lacking in my opinion. Like it doesn't have um, that little nub in the middle that you see on some of the avatars that I've made. Um, so we're going to make it editable, first of all. Um, and then let's turn on the line so we can see the uh, segments. So some things we want to do, we want to add an edge loop. So hit, um, go to the edge selection and M L to create an edge loop and we want it about there uh, we want another one for the middle part here and I'm just left clicking there so let's let's select this middle loop but first I want to switch to faces so let's go you press U and then L and you can select this face uh, and then what I want to do is switch to selection by hitting E and then holding control click on the axis the screen axis here and you'll notice it extrudes that down so now we have like this kind of nice ear shape which is going to look good once we start uh, getting into the details um, so great we have our ears we have our head shape roughly let's add a nose this is really easy to do. Create a capsule, rotate it 90 degrees, move it into place, uh, and scale it down. Press T, it switches to scale, or you can click up here to the scale option. And you can click anywhere outside of these three lines, and it scales it down. 
right? So now we have our nose. Let's bring this move out a little bit. It's gonna have a big nose. All right, that looks good to me. Okay. Actually, I want this head to be a little bit taller. Let's switch back to the head and make this a little taller. I want some more geometry on the, the bottom of the head. We can always tweak things later too. All right, so let's see, what's next? Um, let's add some eyes. That sounds good. All right, so let's create a sphere. And again, make it. Uh, we want these eyes to be the regular sphere because we want to have some of that geometry for the, the middle of the eye, the iris, the pupil, um, and I'll show that later. So let's let's get that eye into position roughly. Okay. And if you look at the ears, you can use the ears to kind of place the eyes. Let's make these eyes a little bit bigger. So we got one eye here, we want to position it a little bit. Okay, so that's your eye. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. All right, we want to create a symmetry object again, because you don't want to have to create two eyes and place them manually. Let's get that in there. Ooh, look, we got some eyes looking good. All right. Um, Let's name some of these eyes, nose, ears, ear, eye. Uh, we got our head. Great. And we, we can find which shapes they are just by the, the uh, objects panel here. All right, so that's good. Um, the next kind of thing we want to do is add the mouth shape. And, excuse me, I like to do this um, a couple different ways, but uh, an easy way is to create a capsule and move that out. We want to rotate that 90 degrees, move it down, and then scale it. So let's see here. So that's, that's pretty good. The chin, he doesn't have really much of a chin, does he? Well, we'll see how that works out later. All right, so here is, is where you can really start to see this take shape. So we have our eye shape, we have our nose shape. So what we're gonna do is start using what's called a volume builder. So let's create a, the volume builder object. And a volume builder lets you use voxels to model a single shape from multiple shapes. So let's drag in some of these objects. We're going to take in our head, our ears, our nose, and, and the mouth. So let's take those into the volume builder. All of a sudden, whoa, that looks really weird. So let's, uh, and if you, if you were to act activate the render view, you wouldn't see anything except for the eyes because they're not part of the volume builder yet. So what you need to do is make this into a mesh too. So holding left click and then you hold alt click and it puts the volume builder into a volume mesher. So this actually creates the geometry from your uh, objects that are inside of the volume builder. So going into the volume builder object, clicking on left clicking on it, you'll see a few things. So these voxels are really big right now. 10 centimeters. So we want, want to make these smaller so we get a little bit more detail in our mesh. So let's make that three. And you'll notice that it looks a lot more detailed, a lot more close to what we want it to look like. Obviously the mouth mouth isn't looking good. So let me, oop, I didn't name the mouth. Let's change that. So let's go into the mouth and change this to subtract from union. And you notice it cuts out the shape of the mouth. And let's say we don't like the shape of this mouth. We can change it and the mesh will update. So see that? See how the mouth shape changes? Pretty cool. And we can even move this in and out. And it kind of works like a Boolean where it subtracts the shape. So this person is really surprised right now. But let's say we wanted to make it look more like a mouth where this is just kind of like cutting into their mouth. 
it's now like showing all of their you know insides of their mouth their tongue their teeth yet um, so what we're going to do is create a sphere inside of the volume builder and it's automatically going to add it in here now what we want to do with the sphere this is the mouth cutout so let's say mouth bag uh, so that's the inside of the mouth so we want this to subtract as well but it's going to be a little bit different so let's go select this and move it inside so if you look at this now you can kind of see like it's subtracting a, a cavity from the inside of the mouth and you can position this to be exactly where you want it to be All right um, but still this looks kind of jagged right you might be thinking like man that just, just doesn't look good and that's because there's a lot of stuff that that isn't doesn't have enough geometry yet so what we can do is go into the volume builder object again and add this SDF smooth object and it smooths everything out and we lose some detail and that's because our, our voxels are still a little bit too big so if we go to lower this even further get two or even one we can start to see that we have a little bit more detail but there's still some some stuff in here so like this head there's only so many polygons that it has to base on so it's actually not smoothing everything out so we can put this all in a subdivision surface and put this inside of the smooth because when you add another object to this volume builder it um, doesn't uh, keep it in the same hierarchy as the previous shape so we'll call this head um, now you can see everything is much much smoother which it looks really really nice uh, so let's let's move this mouth bag a little bit and it's going to update a little bit slower than it, than it did before, but it's going to look really, really nice once we get some more objects in here and more detail. So let's see. Um, how, how are we feeling about this? This looks good. Uh, let's make the mouth opening a little bit smaller. Okay, that's a little bit better. And now we want to get some eye sockets. So we're going to keep our eyes um, roughly where they are maybe move them in just a little bit but we're gonna actually duplicate this so holding or clicking on this and then holding control we can drag a copy of this into the volume builder so going into the volume builder object we can put this underneath the smooth because this is a hierarchy here and we want to subtract and you notice what it does is it actually makes little eye sockets so let's let's turn off this eyes holding alt and clicking on these it'll hide it from the viewport you kind of see like we have these eye sockets now and that looks pretty cool so we can turn those back on but the eye sockets are a little bit big so let's make these a little bit smaller so that it doesn't look as creepy and now the eye like the edge of the eye will kind of dimple in a little bit um, and it'll look really nice once we render it out so we have a basic shape here um, pretty straightforward but we don't have anything in the mouth as of yet. So what we want to do is we want to add some teeth. So we're going to add a top row of teeth. Let's do that. Let's create a cube as a starting object. We'll scale it down. Get it into place a little bit. Scale it down. You got to think like how big do you want these teeth, right? Let's make these a little bit taller than that. A little bit narrower but we want them to have rounded edges so let's do that I'm gonna turn on the fillet and make this a little bit more rounded and then make these these teeth a little bit deeper so those are looking that looks like a pretty good tooth in my opinion you can move that so it's like right at the edge of the mouth that'd be nice all right, so what do we want to do? We don't want to put this inside the volume builder because it's going to be a separate object. So let's get some, um, let's put this in a, uh, a cloner. So you can hit alt click and it puts the, this tooth object, let's just put tooth and then put this teeth. Um, okay, so that looks great. So we have 
some teeth. You can kind of see like they've been duplicated. And if we were to change this object, all the teeth inside this cloner would change. Pretty nice. Um, but we don't want that, <laughs> that arrangement for teeth. We want a little bit different. So clicking on the teeth object, we can change this to radial. And now that's a little bit closer to what teeth are supposed to look like, right? So let's uh, change where they start. So you adjust this start angle. And then if you rotate the, the cloner around, you notice it starts to look more like teeth. Although their position kind of weird, we can fix that. Um, so let's let's create let's add some more teeth to this six because we really want like two teeth in the front, right? Um, and we want let's let's just make this eight teeth and let's adjust. Um, the spacing there so that they're further spaced apart. Sorry, I'm way zoomed out, aren't I? Let's space these apart a little bit more and then rotate. So we have those two teeth like right in the front. All right, let's turn that off. That looks good. All right, so let's move this back into place, pressing E can switch to the move mode and move this back. You might think like that doesn't really look like teeth yet. Uh, and I agree. So we need to make the radius of this a little bit smaller. It's more curved because that's what teeth look like, right? Uh, and we need to adjust the spacing of these teeth um, again. So let's get that rotated around. How are we doing? One, two, three, four. Right there, that's about the middle. Okay, let's position that. Uh, change it to global positioning. And now we have like that nice curvature of teeth. Let's put it a little bit closer to the front of the mouth. So now when we, if we were to light this, they, the tooth, the teeth would cast like a nice shadow, but they still look kind of like, like chiclet teeth, right? Like that looks like pieces of gum that someone stuck in their mouth. Uh, we don't necessarily want that. So what we need to do is actually um, break this. So how we do that is do a right click on the, the cloner and do current state to object. Uh, and that actually converts all the objects in the cloner to separate objects. And we can either delete this or hide it. I'm going to hide it using that alt double click, which puts these red dots on. It means you won't see it in the viewport and you can't select it. Um, so what we're going to do is, is adjust some of these teeth. So you notice they start from the right and increment number-wise. So we're going to keep this, this center ones the same and select the ones to the left and right of the teeth and move those up a little bit using control click, select them, move those up, and the ones next to those, move those up a little bit too. Not too much. All right, cool. Those, those middle ones are a little too low still. There we go. There, now it has some variation. Now you could make each one of these teeth now different shapes. Um, you could tweak them to make them a little bit more irregular, but I'm gonna keep them looking regular like this. Uh, we can even move these down a little bit. Let's say if we wanted more teeth looking there, we can do that. Um, we're gonna create our tongue next. So let's do, do that with a sphere, make that a hexahedron, scale it down, move it into the bottom of the mouth, and make it bigger because we want it to kind of stand out. Now this guy's kind of surprised looking. You might think like, ooh, his mouth doesn't look good. And you're right. So we need to do something about the mouth opening. So what I like to do is using a bend object. So a bend object, really easy to use. Click on it, um, and we actually need to, what's going on here? Uh, fit to parent. Let's try this out here. Bend. Oh no, I don't want to bend. I 
one and FFD. That's right. So FFD gives you lots of control. Uh, you actually want to click on uh, control click this. Um, and then the mouth, you want to drag it under the mouth. And then you can move this back into the volume mesher. Move it down below the smooth and change it back to cut out. So now you have this, this cage that surrounds your mouth. Going into the vertices select, as long as you have FFD selected, you can select these vertices that are on the cage. And you can see they're kind of these little black dots. Um, and I like to select the area select and then just drag over one side. And then you'll see these, this gimbal here. And you can drag this up. And look at that. Now his mouth is curved a little bit. That's cool. Select the middle ones. The same thing. Curve those down. Just like the ones on the right. Curve those up. Maybe select the ones in the middle again to curve it down a little bit more. And that's good. So that looks good. He looks like he's smiling. Great. Um, okay. That's looking good. Let's apply some materials to this and see how it looks. So first of all, we're going to take our teeth and put the teeth material on it. We got our tongue. We're going to put our tongue material on it. And we got our volume mesher, which we're going to put our skin material on it. Um, and then our eyes. Start with the very basics on the eyes. And that'll be nice. All right. So let's see what this looks like through our camera. Kind of see like it's got that nice little look to it. All right, let's 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 position our camera a little bit so that he's more center. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot a neck. Let's add a neck. All right. We're going to create a cylinder, no, a capsule. Let's create a capsule. And this one is going to be in the volume measure. It's going to be our neck. And that looks kind of weird, right? Let's put it in a subdivision surface. Neck. And let's drag that down below the smooth. That is a thick neck, right? All right, that's no good. All right, so let's take our neck and scale it down. And as we move it around, we kind of position our neck the way we want it. Um, all right, that is looking good. Great. All right, so let's switch out of our camera so we can not change our point of view. Um, okay. Looking good. I think we're ready to work on our eyes a little bit. So our eyes are looking good, um, but they don't have any detail to them. Now we could go real simple. Um, we're going to create an octane glossy object, call this pupil, um, and we're going to give him some really big pupils. But let's go into our uh, node editor, um, octane, live viewer. I don't want that. And I want our node editor. And let's dock that over here. All right, so we got our pupil. Let's change this to black. Keep it nice and glossy. Um, and what we want to do with this is convert this eye to editable. And we want to select this interior loop. So using UL for loop select, select the pupil. And then the material object or material material panel, drag the pupil right to the middle, and we can put this over here for the rest of this. All right. So now we got some pupils. We got our eyes. Probably want to put those a little bit further in his head, don't you think? I think so. Now it would be funny if if when you rotate these, it gets kind of funny. Watch this. So if you wanted to position the eyes to look a different way, see how they kind of like 
they rotate funny like that. So um, what you have to do for this is, uh, again, do like a current state to object by right clicking. And you'll notice that each eye is part of the same object. Like when you rotate it, it's like part of the same object. So we're going to hide this using the Alt double click. Uh, and then I haven't found another way to do this. I'm sure there is another way. But let's say I have these these selected in this eye. I go to select, select connected, and it selects only this eye. And then I do a right click and then split. And now I have an eye that's only this eye. Then I go back to the original eye object, do a click here, and then select um, where to go? Select connected, and then again right click, split, and now I can delete this combined eye, and I have these two separate eyes. But still, when I rotate, it would do something like this. So with the rotate tool selected, click here, go to object axis, and select per object manipulation. Now should work. Come on. Oh, I'm still here. That's what I'm doing. I wasn't in the, the object or the modeling selection. So if I select this and then click on the selection per object manipulation, and it's not doing it. All right, well, we'll come back to that. Um, all right, so that's looking good. Let's switch back to our camera view, see how that looks. Looks like a dude. All right, let's uh, let's get some of our hair going. Um, so I like to start again with the sphere, but I base it on the shape of the head. So I take my original head shape, and I do a control drag outside of the cloner object or the uh, mesher object, and I make this the hair. And you can kind of see like it takes over like his entire head, and you can position it to make it more look like hair. Uh, and then switching to face select, I use um, the sculpting tools. So as long as you don't have any of these meshes selected, you'll have like this sculpting tool come up. Um, and we want to have some symmetry, make this a bigger brush. I um, mean, we get this l huge sculpting brush. And you'll notice there's a dot on the opposite side because I selected the X, Y, Z axis for mirroring. And then when you click, the the mesh will change. So I can push his hair out of his mouth. I can pull some some sideburns out. And when you change your, your viewport, um, it moves in the direction that you drag it in. So that's looking a little bit better. His hairline is looking a little bit more respectable. Still looks a little strange. But we can crank up like the subdivisions to get some of some some better detail. Now it's always going to look weird on the back with this particular method uh, unless you like want to sculpt the back of the head and you want to get like some unique shape and we can do that with the hair to make them not look like ridiculous from like different angles but for the purposes of this tutorial we'll focus purely on like just making the basic hair shape uh, looking good and you can do this with with just clicking around and sculpting um, and you know, getting the hair basically to where you want it. You kind of shape it to make it look more like voluminous. Uh, let's make it a little bit wider. But let's say you wanted to have him to have like long hair. You'd have to like add little hair cards and things like that. It's not that hard to do. I'll be, I'll do that in another tutorial on how to do like long hair on a character. This is getting kind of long in the tooth anyway. So here's our basic kind of dude. Let's give him lower, lower hair here. Hair's, hair is always challenging to sculpt in cinema because you got like all this stuff. So we can turn off, if we want to go back to our sculpting tool, we can turn off the symmetry and the size of this. Um, make it like 100. And if you want like one side of his hair to be lower, let's just keep it at 200. If you want one side of his hair to be lower, you can like drag it down. 
or even like duplicate the hair object. So let's say we wanted to do that. So now we have two hair objects which we can sculpt independently to create some, some different shapes and like push it down in different ways so that uh, it has some more interest. You'll see what this looks like a little bit more like in the render because like it'll make it look like he's got like a part on the side of his head now that we have this these two like competing shapes oops lost the sideburns there a little bit all right so now we have our character he's looking okay maybe and we can pull that in a little bit pull that out let's smooth it I have my smoothing brush here and you can just click click and it kind of smooths some some sharper edges uh, let me go back to our head main head so how's that look switch to our camera looks pretty good so let's go to our octane live viewer and see how that looks live viewer window um, I have already this this setup looking at the setup it has path tracing enabled 2000 samples um, some lower specular depth um, GI clamp is set to 10 parallel samples etc camera imager um, pretty standard stuff here nothing too crazy other than the hot pixel removal is set to 0.35 I've just found that I like that that look a little bit better so let's turn on the live viewer and see what that looks like you can kind of see there's our guy um, Ooh, the eyes could use some smoothing that's a little that's a little rough let's uh let's put him in a subdivision surface here so that those eyes look a little bit smoother and you kind of see like his hair is a little bit too small so we could take some time to clear like make his hair bigger uh, so let's see what that looks like let's dock this over here sometimes you gotta refresh when you when you dock the live viewer all right, so we're going to turn off camera updates, uh, switch to the regular perspective camera. Uh, then we're going to we're going to edit his hair some more using the sculpt tool. Um, so let's make his hair just come out a little bit, and make his other hair go out a little bit more. Make it a little bit bigger. And he's got he's got a big forehead. And we could do things like adding eyelids, um, which could look really nice. It, it means that he's not doesn't have this like super surprised expression on his face. Um, we could make this uh, mouth a little bit smaller because it is looking a little big. So let's let's scale this down a little bit. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Let's put this in a subsurface division again, and then move that under here with a subtract, because it just wasn't really that smooth to me. Um, you can kind of see like there's some dimpling going on here. I'm not crazy about that. We can select some of these. See if I can get rid of that. Yeah not ideal maybe I can change some of these so it has more height segments half segments don't really do anything yeah so it's it's decent right um, you can still kind of see his, his hair in the back of his head let's clean that up in the back of his mouth I mean don't want that want that to be hidden by like the light all right so looks pretty good now that we got this looking pretty good uh, you can kind of see there's something missing what might it be it's the eyebrows uh, last but not least so let's create those real quick these are real simple. Create a capsule, move it out, and rotate it 90 degrees. Scale it down. You don't want it to be that fat, right? That 
that's about good. And get it to be the right size. Let's move out of our camera view here. And move it up. Again, you want to position it roughly where you want it to be mirrored. I like to rotate it a little bit. Oh, let's get some of that moved here. All right, so that's looking good. Moved into his face a little bit. Uh, and again, we want to do something like uh, we want to curve it. So we're going to use the same method we used on the mouth using the FFD. Hit Alt click. Um, oh, sorry. Control click, and then parent it to the capsule by clicking and dragging. Um, and then we want to adjust it a little bit. So let's do that. Clicking in here and selecting. Can kind of just bend it. Right, and it's pinching those edges a little bit so we can rotate them. Oops. So that we don't get some kind of weird looking distortion. Rotate that. So those are some nice chunky looking eyebrows. Let's get that as they stick in there, sticking out a little bit too much for my taste. Let's get it rotated in. All right, so we're good there. Now we can create our uh, symmetry object, drag it in, and boom, we have eyebrows. Switching back to our character, let's move the sim whole symmetry object down. And what's cool here is like we can change his expression. Oh boy, he's a real, real surprise. Let's make it, let's drag the hair material on there. And then if we make his eyes tilt down, we can make him real angry. Is he going to be angry? No, we just kind of, he's, he's kind of maybe just happy, maybe a little worried, surprised. I think that's looking pretty good. The finishing touch. Uh, so that's this character. You'll notice uh, he's he's pretty simple. Um, when you create, you know, other things like glasses on the character, you want to model the glasses to make those look nice. Uh, if you want to have long hair, like I mentioned, uh, you want to model that hair to make it look nice and natural and interesting. Um, and there's additional steps you can go through, like if you wanted to use this to rig, um, you'd have to do a whole bunch of more work. But just getting this blocked out, that's half the battle. Um, it looks great. And you can use this as your uh, avatar on social media or on your website. Um, and it'll look really nice and fresh. Um, so uh, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment of what you think. Uh, maybe even make your own and share it. Um, you can find me uh, on social media at Ben Fritz uh, on Twitter. That's B-E-N-F-R-Y-C. I'll put links uh, in the uh, video description. Um, and I'll be making a, a bunch more of these videos showing uh, some cool things that I've learned using Cinema and, uh, and Octane. Super powerful tools. Uh, thank you so much again for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.